Hello everyone, uh, you're here because you were looking for someone who is working on their ProfTech uh, Pro PID 500 as well as I was. Um, what happened over the last, uh, I want to say about six months, we've noticed a symptom whereby uh, you flip the machine on, let it warm up for you know 20 minutes, half hour sort of thing, come down, pull a shot or two, and then all of a sudden the uh, the machine's not heating. You can hear the clicking relays going off um, and the uh, PID down here is lighting up and, and telling us number the the you know the temperature of the unit but it's not bring coming up to temperature. Um, and so uh, I've did some research online and I found out the very one of the most common things that happens is this little solid state relay over here. This actually goes um, so what we're going to do today is just test it, make sure that it's in fact not working, and then order a new part, and that'll be in the second part of this same video. So, uh, in order to remove the cap, it's fairly straightforward. There are four bolts that bolt this top down, here, 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 and here. And then after the top comes off, then you can go underneath and pull out four screws, which are located here, here, and then... On the other side too. They are a, a hex, a metric hex size. Um, I'll put uh, the numbers in the description there of what what tools you'll need. Um, after the top is open, then we are presented with this. This is on the right hand side of the um, the boiler, and uh, you can see this little uh, frame here. This frame that comes up and around. There is some thermal paste that's in between um, the relay and this uh, this bracket. What I've found online is in fact that it's not whipping wicking the heat away enough. So when I do the install of the uh, the new SSR, you're gonna find that uh, I've got a new um, heat sink that's gonna go with it too. So in any event, uh, we wanna make sure that it is in fact the relay that's not clicking on and off. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna test it. I've got my handy dandy ohm meter here. Um, it is uh, currently set uh, on, oh, continuity. Uh, and then we're gonna see when the PID calls for heat, if this solid state relay is going to click on. An easy way is to, the easiest way to check that is when you flick it on, make sure there's water in the sensor there. And then we have both lights are on. This is the boiler light and this is the um, actual power light. Uh, you can see here we're below temperature and that little dot right there that means it's calling for heat. And you can see there's a little light down here. The PID is calling for heat and it's saying oh we got to turn on the little relay needs to turn on here. Um, and so anyway it's on. If I pull one of the leads off you can see that relay turns off. So relay is supposed to be on right now. I just disconnected one of the leads because we can test whether or not this is actually sending voltage across. Put the phone here and I'll show you where to put the leads and you can test this. So we'll set up our little ohm meter and okay, that means we've got continuity going across our leads. So now we're gonna test, we're gonna put one lead on the negative and then one lead on the positive. As you can see here, I'm not getting any continuity across the two um, the two leads, even though that it's calling for heat. So the two leads, they're not the relay is not shutting, which means that it's open, which means that it's not not going to send voltage to the to the boiler. Um, so yeah, that means the SSD is done, which is uh, you know not worst case scenario actually a pretty straightforward replacement. Um, so in, I'm going to cut here and we're going to uh, disassemble when the new part comes in and install the new part and I'll show you how I'm going to install the new part. Um, I'm going to do a different configuration than here just to make sure that we get a good heat sink and this SSD lasts forever and ever. All right, to remove this little SSR in here, solid state relay, um, what you're going to need is uh, your uh, Allen wrench kit. You can get 
little drill adapters for this too, but I recommend just the little finger things. That's all you need. Uh, you can exactly torque down how much torque you want. Um, so this one is a uh, three screw. The 2.5 screws are for um, the top mount. I'm sure you'll have figured that out if you've gotten this far yourselves. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull out this screw like so. Okay, and put it aside. And then what we're gonna wanna do is kind of shimmy this over a little bit so we have access to pull off the leads from the SSD. I've already got this one off because um, we were testing it. So careful if your machine was on, careful because these um, these copper tubes are coming from the boiler in there. They can be very, very hot, but uh, if you're like me and your machine wasn't making heat, um, then, you know, they're just warm, so. But just be careful, these can be, these two little copper pipes can be very hot. And the boiler can be hot too. Um, so yeah, you can see here, we pulled out all of the leads. Um, and we'll put them aside. Um, I'm gonna be probably stripping these and putting new ends on because the new relay I got uh, does not have the, it has the screw mount um, hold, uh, uh, screw mount rather than the, the slip on um, style. So anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we get there. So next is to remove the two screws from here. And these should be fairly loose. Um, they were on mine. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Uh, probably for the thermal paste, there was like torque down to a specific um, amount. Uh, and that could have led to the failure too. Um, these are also the same uh, 2.5 mil um, diameter screws. So after that, you just pop this guy off. And then, yeah, you can see here, this is the, the old thermal paste. And uh, this is the faulty solid state relay. Um, I'll get a good picture for you so you can take a look at it too. Um, yeah, and this is gonna go here. All right, uh, next step is going to be mounting this back up and installing the new relay. So this video is specifically for the uh, Proftech 500 which is what I own. I don't know if the 400 or six or 800, um, yeah, six or 800 models have uh, the same little solid state relay in them. Um, and they may have very well changed the design by now because this has been, I think it's been a known issue for failure on these anyway. Um, so this is what mine looks like. It's a, a 20 amp, 240 volt max solid state relay. And the idea is the DC voltage at the bottom uh, initiates the AC voltage at the top to go through. And uh, so when the PID calls for heat, it sends uh, voltage to this little guy. And when um, this solid state relay engages, closes the circuit, it will then uh, send voltage, AC voltage to the uh, boiler element. And uh, in terms of replacing this, there are a couple options. I purchased this one from everyone's favorite retailer <laughs> online source. There are a whole bunch of different options here, but I opted for the 25 amp with heatsink. And I'll show you how I'm going to put that on when it gets here. So what you're looking for is same specs as what's coming out. The one I took out of mine is 20 amp. This one's 25 amps, so it'll work just fine. Now, if you're also like me and you want to pinch some pennies, uh, <laughs> you know, this is another online uh, retailer that you can purchase a, a similar item for a fraction of the cost. Uh, frankly, it's all made in China, so I don't know if there's any benefit for one or the other. Just make sure that you're getting the one, as you can see here, uh, DC to control the AC and then uh, 25 amp Sometimes they underrate it, so you might want to upgrade, but that's all. So I had to make a little amendment. Um, this is the original piece that came out. Doot, doot. And this is the new piece. So you can see it's about twice the size. <laughs> I think it'll fit 
find where the old piece was. So that means I can't actually put on the new um, heat sink, which is a bit of a bummer. Probably the one from AliExpress would work. Um, but I want coffee tomorrow, so we're, we're going with this. And if this one lasted a year, then this one will last a year until I can get the proper one. In any event, yep, let's pitter patter. I gotta take all these little caps off and uh, screw them down onto these new connectors. So let's go. All right, it's not pretty. Well, actually it is pretty, but uh, moreover, it is effective. So what I've gone ahead and done is, um, as you can see, uh, installed the new solid state relay. Uh, I did test it before it, it went off and it, it does work. The um, uh, leads here at the end, I had to take off the little plastic, um, plastic bits that were covering in order to fit them on the new mounts. Um, properly, probably the best thing to do is actually just snip it and put on those little U connectors. Um, I don't have those, so I just went with the connectors that were on there and um, drilled a little hole in them and mounted them up that way. Uh, I also put some shrink wrap on this end. Uh, I didn't on this end because A, there's clearance here, and this is like, it's installed in rock solid, so it's 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 gonna be okay. And um, this is low voltage too, so I, I mean, you know, yeah, it'll be fine. Um, and also the shrink wrap that I have wouldn't have fit over the connector. I would have had to strip these. And then uh, I will say clearance is super, super tight here. I sh should be able to get the, um, the cowling on still. Uh, as you can see, the new relay is touching the boiler over here. So I put a little piece of uh, tape in between the two just to keep them separated. Uh, I'm gonna order the one from China and get and replace it with this one because this one is just, it's too big, every dimension. <laughs> and uh, it's not properly heat sunk. So my assumption is that it's actually going to, you know, last just as long, if not less as long as the original one. Um, yeah, so that being said, we will uh, put it back together. So we have coffee. Um, but we're also going to replace this with the new part when it comes in. Um, and we'll, we'll follow up this video with that one. Um, yeah, aside from that, uh, got working again for, you know, less than 12 or less than $15. Um, part was 12 bucks. So yeah, 15 bucks, including my two pieces of shrink wrap. I think we should be good to go. Just reinstalling the skin here and before I get it, all tucked back together. I uh, just wanted to show you that there is tons of room between the side and the um, uh, where the frame is here. I would thought that was going to be really tight, but it actually is. I've, it gives you about a half an inch here, probably close to one centimeter for the, the Germans and so forth. So anyway, just want to let you know that that is uh, you got lots of wiggle room here. I'm I'm not as tight and hard up as I thought it was. <laughs> all right, she's all put back together. I'm gonna flip the switch. Okay, let's see if we hear the furnace turning on, the boiler. There it is. Woohoo! It's fixed for now. Uh, I did notice too, putting the skin back together is a little bit finicky. You have a uh, bolt at the bottom, but you also have these um, side bolts here that adjust uh, some sort of, one of the ways. Anyway, I messed it up. As you can see, I, I have a lip here now on the side. Get my finger over there. See, I have this lip here. And um, uh, it, it doesn't let this, tray seat perfectly. It sits nicely on this side, but this side is still loose. So um, when you're putting this back together, just be mindful and I'll, I'll do that in my second video too. Um, make sure that we, we get the right, uh, right adjustment with this skin so it doesn't stick out. Um, 
yeah but aside from that we're working we're brewing coffee i'm gonna pull a shot and see how she goes all right we've gone ahead and got our coffee ready so we'll throw that in here so we'll throw this guy in and let's see her pull a shot There she goes.